and spent the whole weekend trying out all the film impacts, 90 plus transitions and effects in Premiere Pro to find the absolute best ones that I would use as an editor. So you don't have to. And I gotta say, it makes Premiere Pro so much more easier creating effects and transitions. No, I think all the effects and transitions are absolutely amazing. There are some questionable ones. However, these are the ones that I find the most useful for me as an editor who mainly edits YouTube videos. And this is just my personal opinion in no particular order, except for the first one. Number one, we have Motion Tween. By far the most useful tool in my opinion, Motion Tween automatically creates smooth transitions between different position, scales, rotation, and opacity settings of graphics without using any keyframes. I'm going to use my Phantom plugin to download a sticker from Jiffy. We'll type in Ghost add the sticker. And in our timeline, all you have to do is add your object into the timeline, make the cuts, change the position of each cut to how you want it. We're gonna go to effects, find motion tween, and add it as a transition in our timeline. And it automatically applies smooth motion without motion blur to your objects. Hey guys, we're a pretty new channel on video editing and our goal is to get to 100 subscribers. And at any point, if you get anything useful out of it, please make sure to like, subscribe, or just leave us a comment in the video and check out our Phantom plugin for Premiere Pro. Next, we have Rounded Crop FX. Pretty straightforward. This effects helps round corners on your assets. And I don't know why before the 25.5 updates, Premiere never really had this option. Well, kind of, but you kind of have to manipulate a lot of things just to get rounded corners. But thank you, Film Impact. We now have so much better control to add rounded corners in Premiere. In the effects panel, we're going to search up rounded crop effects and add it to the clip in our timeline. In the effects control panel, we're going to adjust it to how we want this to look like. And number three is the wiggle effect. This effect adds a subtle floating wiggle effect to your graphics, making them far more visually appealing. In the FX panel, we're going to search up wiggle FX. Add it to your clip and adjust how you want it to look like. If you have text in your graphic, you also have the ability to make the text float around individually, just like this. Play around with it by going to the effects control and clicking surprise me to randomize the settings and see what you can get. Number four, we have pop motion impact. Super simple FX transition to add a subtle pop effect for your graphic or logo. And you might be asking, couldn't I just use scale keyframes to do this? And yes, you can. However, if you add motion and other effects, you have to nest, add more keyframes and move a lot of settings around. But with pop motion impact, this gives you so much more control and you can use it with other effects without any nesting or any keyframes. And it makes everything so much more simple and dropping it in. I'm going to go to flaticons.com, copy to clipboard, use our Phantom plugin to paste it into Premiere. By the way, this is going to be a free tool which you can download to copy from your clipboard and paste it into Premiere. And we're just gonna adjust the clip, drag it out. Going back to flaticons.com, we're gonna copy another icon and paste it back into Premiere using our tool. Going back to the FX panel, we're gonna search up pop motion impact and add to the transition of the clip adjust the timing of how quick you want it to be. And let me position the top clip to make it a little bit better. Go to the effects control and click on surprise me to try different variations to spice up your video. Number five, we have motion camera. Motion camera makes it super easy to create seamless transitions between two clips. If you remember in the past, how to create a seamless zoom transition was a pretty big thing. But the issue was you had to go through all these different steps with adjustment layers and counting how many frames before you can cut, manually creating motion blur just to do this one transition. In our sequence, currently we have four clips without any transitions. In the effects panel, we're gonna search up motion camera and we're gonna add it at the frame cuts as a transition. Go to the effects control panel and we're going to choose a preset. And in this case, we're going to click power zoom in to get that seamless zoom in transition. And we're going to copy the transition and paste it on the other clips. Next, we have the text animator tool. Basically, it helps create a simple text transition with a quick drop. This fade effect that you're seeing right now couldn't have been done without creating a mask and using keyframes, which I find absolutely crazy. To use this, we're gonna add a text graphic onto our screen. Going to the effects panel, we're gonna search up text animator and add it to the clip in the sequence. Right off the bat, this looks great. Going to the effects control panel, we can select several different presets to make this unique for this video. So I'm gonna select fade in, and we can also try all these other presets. 
What's also amazing is that if you have a logo, the effect in the presets also work for the words in the logo, as you can see here. Next, we have the camera shake effects. Pretty simple tool. It adds camera shake to your footage. And this is a great tool if you use a lot of stock footage and you don't want it to look so bland or flat. You can use this FX to make it pop a little bit more. To start this off, we're going to use our Phantom plugin and go to Phantom Stock Media. We're going to type in dog running and see what we can find. I like this first clip, so I'm going to click on it, select the quality that we want and download. We're going to add the clip to the sequence. And in the effects panel, we're gonna search up camera shake and add it directly into our clip. Just like all the other effects, we can go to the effects control panel and select the different presets to make this unique for our video. Next, we have two similar ones, grow and shrink FX. Pretty simply, it's a great simple tool to automatically slowly scale in or scale out out of your graphic or your video. In here, we have four clips added to our sequence and let's see what we can do to improve this video. In the effects panel, we're going to search up Grow FX and add it to the first clip. Playing it back, it looks pretty good. But in the effects control panel, let's go down, go to Grow and let's make it 15% to have a greater effect. Great. Now let's copy the effect and put it to the next clip. This doesn't look too bad, but I want the effect to be even greater. So I'm going to go back down and increase the Grow size to 30%. Now let's go back to the effects panel and search up shrink FX and add it to the third clip. And let's play back. Pretty subtle. So I'm going to go to the effects control panel and increase the shrink size to 20%. Not too bad. And let me copy it over to the last clip as well. Well, that's pretty much it. If there's a tool that I should be using, let me know. If you find this helpful, please please make sure to like and subscribe and get me to see that 100 subscriber mark where I'll be giving more free stuff maybe. And yeah, just like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Let me know what you guys want to see in the future. Take care.